Hello and is my mic on? Yeah, it's on. Hello and Great welcome. Start. I don't. Is it on? Yes. Yeah. It, it feels. I don't know. It sounds different. It is definitely on. Hello and well. Maybe I can put my both headphone ears in. There we go. Yeah. Now you can hear yourself. Should we restart? Nah. Yeah. Hello and welcome to Water Cooler, episode number 252, 69 plus 69 plus 69 plus 45 as most people know it. Thank you so much for tuning in. You know how the show goes. I hang out with my cruel digital friends. We kick it Philly style. We got some booze and uh, we just, we like to chat. We like to chit the chat. With me today, Kalen Beans here. What's going on? Hi, Kalen. Hi. He's in the he's in the booth, but he's still bringing it. He has a flick in the bean we're going to get to Ooh. today. Gary Smith's here. What's up? What's up? Gary and I had a little boys weekend. We did. Get into that momentarily. Matt Fondelier's here. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Matt needed a tech talk this morning. Oh, God. Poor guy. <laughs> Pretty rough. I uh, guess uh, we can get into that if you had want. Some, well, it's just, it's alerting when I get a, a message from Matt, who's kind of, I would say, the hub of this entire company. <laughs> Everything kind of goes through when he goes, hey, guys, my iPhone's not working. <laughs> like, just a heads up and... It's uh, It worries me. Yeah. And, of course, Mike Dawson's here. Hello. Mike. What's happening? What's ha- I should be asking you the same question, sir. What's going on? Everything all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually hear the sigh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm hurting a little bit today. I, c- I could tell. Big party? Big celebration? I just fucking had a free <laughs> Sunday, so decided to get fucked up all day watching football. That's... That's well totally done. fine. Well and done. Yeah, well I figured, done. I figured you were celebrating the album being done. It is finished. Hey. Congratulations. <laughs> Mixed right now. I figured you were celebrating that, but no. Just, and just we Sunday. wrote a new song. Uh, wrote a new song in about 30 minutes. Me and Ted wrote a new song called The Last Honky Tonk Hero. And, um, I love that title. And I think that might be what we're going to call the record. Oh, wow. I love that. So we're going to get it mixed, and then the band goes in, we'll listen to mixes, and then I'm getting one more studio day, and then we'll record one more song that'll be the first song on the record. Yeah. So so it's it's done, but it's not done yet. Yeah. Good thing you didn't track vocals today. Oh, Jesus. What's the highest note you could hit right now? I can't. I can't even hit notes. He's oh. having trouble <laughs> speaking, Chris. I am, I am having trouble talking. Yes, I'm... Uh, well, was your shaky. was your weapon of choice? Oh Jesus! My friend brought over Jägermeister. Oh. Oh. that's not a friend. Wow. Yeah, no, I got <laughs> that's a monster. Like, and I, I saw it. He got one of those. It was uh, uh, like a fucking eight pack of Jäger shots, two ounce shots. They pre they they, they pre package like fucking eight uh, Jäger like airplane shots. bottles. Yeah, yeah that's a yeah. New, that's the thing now. Those are popping up in uh, in grocery stores now. You can get like a ten pack of like Tito's bottles. Yeah, maybe it was a mm. ten pack, but uh, yeah, we finished all of that. Dang. Oh yeah, that'll do it. And beer, and of course you got the yeah. the trick is you get the liquor in, you get to that level you you want, and then the beer just keeps you there. Yeah. And then you just drink the beer, and it, it just you just keeps you level. Yeah, I gotta stop this. By the way, something I learned I'm detoxing uh, hard right now. It sucks. What I've been learning in my bartending at home during quarantine days: a shot glass is an ounce and a half. It's not two ounces. Right. I did not right. know that. That's what a shot is: ounce and a half. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, you guys knew that. All right, cool. We'll oh. check that off with uh, <laughs> command hooks for things that I'm really late to the game with. Oh. Which I got to bring up in a little bit. But here's the thing, Matt. A shot is whatever size the shot glass you buy is. That mm-hmm. is absolutely correct. And if you go to certain restaurants, they'll pour you a shot like in a highball glass or something. Right. There's no way they're measuring it. But well, if you're trying to be precise, I'm just telling you a full shot is actually an ounce and a half. So when you hear it's a two-ounce shot... Be, be aware in your brain. It's a little bit more than your typical mm. shot glass shot. Yeah, there's there are tricks to do. Like I think the solo cups have a have a marker for yeah, where, the, where the shot for is. Yeah, yeah. Mm. there's a, there's two mo- there's another measure in, in the solo cup too. The lowest one is a shot, and then the middle one is a glass of wine. If you guys, what's your shot of choice? We know you're. We, I've heard we've gone over our drinks of choice, but what is the shot of choice? Hmm. That Jack you, Daniels for me. Jack, you just go shot of Jack. Sure, that's spicy. Yeah, well, when you drink it as much as I have, don't really bind it as much. <laughs> I know. Matt and I used to do Costco runs for uh, this company. We were mere interns. 
And Matt on the side would always get some Jack Daniels That's and some right. Diet Dr. Pepper. <laughs> yep. To be put on my DDP. card. Let's yeah, of be course. Clear. Yeah, oh, no, I would yeah. do two different <laughs> transactions. No, Let but, that be known. Yeah. Well, you have to turn the receipt. But yeah, you'd you'd buy all the stuff for all the snacks for work, like the pretzels and the and the. Uh, waters and then he'd ask, "Oh, can we start another transaction here?" And then just a big <laughs> ball of Jack and a this is Costco sized Jack. And, oh yeah, and Diet Dr Pepper. Hey man, if you're gonna go, maybe yeah. pick it up. What about you, Gary? If I'm gonna do a shot of something, it's probably gonna be it's gonna be ice cold and it's gonna be vodka or nice tequila. Okay, because both of those taste like pretty much nothing. Yeah, that's, especially it's, it's the cold. colder it is too. But, yeah, ice cold. Yeah, you don't get any of that spice, Kalen. Well, I'm a rum guy, and I know it's strange, but I'll do a shot of Captain Morgan. Now, a shot of Captain Morgan is, especially if you can't achieve cold, Captain Morgan's a very easy shot to take. Yeah, a lot of spice in that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dawson? I'm a tequila guy, but my favorite thing to do is when I find a new dive bar, I always ask the bartender for a shot of the shittiest tequila they have back there. <laughs> I've witnessed this. I've seen this as well. <laughs> what's the purpose of this? Just to find out, who, just to see <laughs> just how what's the worst tequila in the yeah. world. How, just how divey it is. And, and most of the time, it's not that bad. Yeah. You know. Um, but they always it always gets a good look. It's kind of, Kalen, when you sit at a Mexican restaurant and you try the salsa and you can judge how good this restaurant's going to be based off of the chips and salsa that they handed you right at the top of the meal. Sure. That's that's what Dawson does. Right. He's just trying their salsa, <laughs> and he's making sure that this bar is a le- yeah, this is legit. Yeah, tequila should just be called bar <laughs> salsa. <laughs> I do like that. Typically, somebody will come down and like slap a C note on the counter and say, "Give me a shot of your finest brandy." And Dawson's <laughs> like, "I just want the shittiest tequila you have." <laughs> I Kinky like Friedman it. calls tequila Mexican mouthwash. Yeah, yeah, that, be, that, that that's uh, fair as well. Yikes. And and for me, I I think Jameson. Uh, same way Matt is with Jack. I'm with Jameson. I've just been drinking it for so long. Yeah, it's just it's smooth. It's easy. I know what I'm getting. Exactly. Yeah. And, I'm, and then if, and then what's my what's my drink of choice? Jameson on the rock. So it's really weird <laughs> when I'm drinking taking a shot of Jameson and then I'm chasing it with a Jameson on the rocks right after. But that's uh, your baller. That's my move. A little JMO action. Uh, Gary and I, as I said, we went on a very fun Salt Lake City trip that I want to I want to talk to you guys about because there's a lot of discussion points from from our trip. But first, I always like to start off the show with some listener comments. So uh, let's kick it off. Now it's time for listener comments. And this is from our Facebook group. If anybody wants to join, it's a very nice community we got going. Facebook.com slash group slash Bobo Boy Army Worldwide LLC. Make sure you answer those questions, though. If you try to ignore those questions, you're not getting in. Yeah, there are two questions, uh, and they're very easy. They're if, you if you don't know the answer, Type I suggest starting back at episode one. Yeah. 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 Or sucking up to Gary because he is the gatekeeper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Here we go. Stephanie writes, hey, brothers. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. Hey, brother. hey sister. Hey, hey hermano. Hey, Here, sister. <laughs> here's a little break from lasagna versus surf and turf. Thank you. Parentheses, lasagna all day. Woof, woof. <laughs> I was playing apples to apples, the tame version of cards against humanity, the scumbags, <laughs> and the card was American. The judge narrowed it, narrowed it down to A. Blinken versus Rednecks, and then she made a poll. And I just thought, oh, that's cool. She played apples to apples. Now, I've gone on record saying I hate apples to apples and I hate cards of humanity because they're already pre-written jokes that you're just throwing out there, and there's mm-hmm. no real creativity, and I always wanted that. But... I played it again pretty recently, and it was fine. It's pretty fun. Yeah, so it's again, it's a good time. And you ever play the game, Dawson? Never. Neither of them. Never. Never heard of it. Wow. What's so? The, there's generally a category. I card. like Cards Against Humanity. I think that's fun as hell. But What's I've never heard one? of Apples. Apples, to Apples. Apples like the kids' yeah. version. It's the uh, original. Oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, so it's just not vulgar. Yeah. A category yeah. card gets played, and then every player, instead of having like seven playing cards in their hand, they have seven possible responses. And everybody throws down secretly what they think is the funniest answer to that category. And, and then, then a de- judge gets to read off all the answers, and then they'll pick what they thought was the funniest one. But all these answers are already written for you? They right. are. Right. And so in Cards Against Humanity, all of the choices are like either really dirty, or there's some sort of double entendre, or they're sick in some other way. Yeah. So the whole idea is that you are playing things where you're trying to offend people. Sounds fun. It, yeah, is, it really, is fun. It is really fun. Time. There's a meme version of that, too, that I've played that's yeah. very, very fun. What do you meme? Yeah. What do you meme? All right. So thank you, Stephanie. Vicky. Oh, there's. we talked about this last week. We want to see some 69s in the wild, right? 
And people have been posting in the Facebook group. Vicky posted a picture of a horse. Uh, they had a horse show, and her number was 69. So there was a picture of a horse with the number 69 on it. Zach had a pizza place phone number with a bunch of six nines at the end. The last four digits were 6969. Uh, Karen had a bus, number 69. And Ben, finding his way right into Mike Dawson's heart, avocado, 69 cents. Wow. Yeah. And I showed you guys right before the show turned on. <coughs> I just checked my, my cell phone, saw how much battery was left, 69%. Screenshot. Yeah, screenshot. <laughs> now, uh, while we're... Oh, go ahead. Should we do the last 69 in the wild? Oh, yeah. Gary and I walked by one in Salt Lake City. Yeah, you guys walked by two people 69ing in Salt Lake? There was, there was like a sundial, and in the ground, they had laid in a 69. Wow. A yeah, picture. nice 69 in the wild. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Shannon... I was showing everyone. Kaylin. I don't think that the camera can see that. It's okay. Um, I'll, I'll embed it in no, the... No, I know uh, you will. I just don't want people watching to think I'm... Shannon just got a new custom sign in her kitchen... What's on the menu? It says what's on the menu. Oh, I saw that. That was amazing. Delightful. It's so cool. So awesome. So, are you are you making merch without us, Matt? What's going on here? I should really do that. (laughs) It'd be a hell of a thing to appropriate some show content and try to make some money off of it, though. I agree. Uh, Kathy, who, by the way, treated us out to uh, lunch. (laughs) Thank you, Kathy. She gave us an undisclosed amount of money. Thank you, Kathy. Undisclosed. <laughs> Undisclosed. Not, Undisclosed. Yeah. Definitely not the price of your finest bourbon. <laughs> earlier, earlier, earlier. Brandy. Thank uh, you. Brandy, yeah. <laughs> she wrote, super awkward morning. I'm at my new house I just bought while the carpet cleaners are here. I was talking to my mom on the phone, and she asked me what butt plugs are. As I'm explaining <laughs> it to her, the carpet cleaner was uh, behind her, and she didn't even realize. Uh, wow. Fair. Yeah, very... A lot of questions arise yeah. from this situation, Kathy. First off, thank you again for buying us lunch at the same time as you buying a new house. My yeah, goodness. Seriously. And a butt plug, apparently. <laughs> and I, 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 I think we mixed up the story here. She, I, don't oh. think, I don't think she bought a butt plug. Well, maybe she bought a butt plug for her mom, and her mom's like, what's a butt plug? Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to understand how the question came up. Yeah, I wonder I why, too. I did a little bit, though. But, yeah, the fact that she's talking to her mom about butt plugs and explaining – having to explain what butt, plug, butt plugs are to your mother. Sure. That's right, an interesting convo. I lose. I had the over-under on number of times butt plugs <laughs> in said <in> three. <laughs> and uh, let's see here. Oh, Jim posted a picture. He got birthday Kringle. Yeah. Sent oh, to the yeah. OC, which is nice. Sent from Look. Wisconsin, by the way, which that's very authentic. Happy birthday, Jim. <laughs> and speaking of uh, food on the other side of the country – being uh, Kenzie Gessler shares a uh, a picture of a meat pie, and she writes, "Being born and raised in Michigan, yeah. I have to defend Dawson regarding meat his pie. meat pie, and Michigan being known for them. Michigan is, in fact, known for meat pies, more commonly known as pasties. Pasties. Uh, well, pasties. actually, no, they no, are pronounced pasties. pasties. Yeah." Opposed to pasties, which are nipper sticker stickers. What are what? <laughs> nipple nipple stickers. stickers. She wrote nipper stickers. I think. Uh, but you got Dawson over under how many times I thought <laughs> nipper was going to be said on this show. <laughs> Dawson's love of the mitten state always brings me the warm feels. Woof woof. Woof. Thank you, Kenzie. And I know Dawson knows about pasties. The mitten state is that a thing? Well, uh, probably just because it's cold and they wear mittens. Maybe I don't know. Yeah. Isn't that like two thirds of this country? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Matt? Maybe maybe Michigan invented mittens. Maybe. I don't know. Ma- or maybe it's because the state of Michigan looks like a mitten. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Oh, that's probably Oh, right. that has to be it. A mitten state. And uh, Matt knows pasties, or he thought they are pasties, but he still knows what they are. Gary, do you know what a pasty is? I've seen the picture, so I know because of that. I don't think I knew before that. I imagine Kalen would it's know. It's kind of an English thing, too. It is an English yeah. thing. Mm. It's so good, especially when they go, do you want gravy with that? I'm like, oh, I, will you marry me? They're what? good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it takes for Dawson's heart. What? What? There are very little foods that if you ask me, do you want gravy with that? I would say, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll say yeah. So, um, yeah, I, the pasty, it's, it's just a, it's kind of like a white person's empanada. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's a nice yeah, little it's like, treat. It's, in a, it's stew in bread. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. There's a great pasty place right by uh, the hospital oh. that you go to, Kalen. It's called the Pasty Kitchen. Well, I'll try it out. It's well, phenomenal. Well, because Ooh. we're talking about special. So you can get meat pies out here? Oh, yeah. Where's that, Long Beach? Because they, yeah. they travel better than Italian sandwiches. 
Oh, they, that's very true. Well, we are, right yeah, I got an appointment pies. tomorrow. Let's do it. Hear that, oh, yeah. Kathy? <laughs> <laughs> Kathy, how's that business going? By the way, yeah. the Kathy buys you lunch. Well, oh yeah, we. That? I don't think we mentioned this on the on the other episode. Oh, that was a Patreon exclusive story? That was a Patreon story? exclusive, oh, but yeah, someone right, bought yeah. us lunch. Uh, Kathy bought us lunch. For an it, undisclosed amount of money. <laughs> undisclosed yeah. amount of money, yeah, so there you go. And that'll do it for the uh, for the listener comments. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thanks, yes. everyone, for commenting. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks for commenting, yes. And White Claw, come on, Please. Man. <laughs> Please. Please. <laughs> or Corona Seltzy. <laughs> yeah, we, we can, can adjust. We listener Seltzies. We can call it Listener Seltzies. Yeah, we can adjust. <laughs> it won't make sense. I don't care. Whoever wants to sponsor us. Actually, speaking of sponsors, um, there's a Chunk Nibbles ad going around on Facebook. And I don't know if they're targeted to the water cooler listeners. Obviously but they are. They, yeah. Dawson, I don't know if you've seen this. I have not. But what what does it say? It, it says, <laughs> I don't have it in front of me, so I'll paraphrase, but the ad has a picture of Chunk Nibbles, and then beneath it, it says, they're better than crack, or so I've heard. Now, uh, the thing about this that's so, the thing about this that's so amazing, Dawson- did, It didn't come from Chunk Nibbles, though, did it? No, it no, did. It came it did. from Chunk Nibbles. This is their official ad that they wrote, like their verbiage that they wrote underneath it. Now, the I thing about it. this that's the most amazing to me is- I took you saying it's better than crack and right. I should know I've smoked crack and I put the Chunk Nibbles logo at the top and the bottom and made like a video. I sent it to my cousin and my uncle and, and they neither, were horrified. Of, neither of them have ever addressed it. Right. They pretended it didn't happen right. and then six months and later now, this ad shows up yeah, where they clearly saw it and they were like, well, I'm using that one day. That's going to the branding. There you go. There's a great meme I think on the Facebook page of – it's like a famous one of the guy dressed in the Joker uniform who's like slumped over on the train and another guy next to him was all happy and cheery. And the happy and cheery guy goes, oh, this cake is better than crack. And then Dawson's the clown. Who, <laughs> Dawson, who's actually tried crack. <laughs> I, I love it. Everybody's very funny on, on the Facebook group. But I can't believe Chunk Nibbles is using that in their actual copy. That's a paid advertisement. Hey, it's it's amazing. fantastic. Good it's a job. great, great tagline. So, by yeah. the way, if you do get that and you click on it, use the code Wolf Wolf. You'll save yourself a little dough, right? Me. It's getting near the holidays. Time for some sweets. Yeah, Chunk Nibbles. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, we do have a tech talk, too, which uh, maybe we'll push to a little bit later, because I want to talk about this trip that Gary and I went the, on. The tech talk's really quick. You want to do it? You, you want to hit it? All right, we'll let's do it. just read the question, and I'll, I'll – it's super short. Okay. It looked like it was a long response. So I did. That's why I was going to push it. No, but if no. Gary can it, – It'll be super quick. Is there a theme song from KC Peters for this segment? Not yet. What nor, the heck? Nor is What's there going to be a joke corner because our prep was all around the Salt Lake City trip. So, sorry. All right. Joe Urbanek, who – does he run the – does he moderate he's the one, Facebook He's group? one of the moderators, yeah. Okay. He, he writes, I've been hearing a lot about mesh routers lately. Matt. What's up? Do you know what a mesh router is? Hmm. If you had to guess, a mesh router – those improv skills. Just grinding in his head trying to come up with a joke. I really was. I really was. I mean, I know the router has something to do with the internet, so the mesh part is what's throwing me off. Yeah. There. That's what's making it confusing. Because mesh is a fabric. Right. With it's holes. fabric for your router. It's a costume. For your router. For your internet. Yeah. Internet costume. Perfect for October. What's they the word? Because this is, is the it? time to decorate. So, Where do I get one? Will it fit my dog? Will it fit Chris? Well, here, I'll finish the... <laughs> <laughs> if A is yes, B is yes. <laughs> I've, Joe writes, I've been hearing a lot about mesh routers lately. I was wondering if anyone knew of any podcasts that occasionally have a segment where they talk about technology. Maybe something like Tech Talk, that they could let us know if it's worth it. If there's a podcast where they end the segment with a joke, that would be even better. <laughs> Don't think you're going to find that here. But anyway... Gary, explain <coughs> mesh routers. Yeah, sorry about that, Joe. No, no joke today because we uh, we had other stuff to focus on. But um, mesh routers are great if you have a space that's big. A mesh router is is just like a normal router, but you plug it into your cable modem or your DSL or whatever you have, and then it comes with little nodes that you then plug in in different places throughout your house, and each node connects to the last. So you have your one and wherever your internet comes out of the wall, and then if your house is big and you don't get good service. You plug another one in halfway down the hall. You plug a third one in in the kitchen, and it just expands where your coverage is. They're amazing. There are a lot of good companies. I personally recommend the Eero, E-E-R-O, which was recently acquired by Amazon. I My house is not big, but because it's one story, it is very spread out. 
and I absolutely needed this, and I've got amazing coverage all of my from property line to property line. They're not cheap, but they're worth it, and they're really, really good products. Check uh-huh. that out. Eero. Nice. Eero. And we could do listener Eero comments if uh, if Eero's listening. Seriously, Amazon. We'll take whatever. Um, Bezos, come on. We're not desperate, right? All right. So Gary and I – thank you again for that tech talk, Gary. Sure, sure. Thanks, Joe. Gary and I just got back from Salt Lake City, the land of the Great Arch. And we had a blast. We flew private, which is probably the, the biggest story of the weekend or one of them. Yeah, it's up there. Because it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. So Mark Garrigus uh, – Famed attorney who Gary Ghost is based off of. Yeah, it, he he flies private all the time, and he offered to fly us out to Salt Lake City. So we jumped onto this uh, little Cessna plane and and flew over, and it was, it was a good flight. It's very smooth. Um, this is the same plane that I took to San Antonio last month. So I I thought it was a it was a nice flight. We had Mike August with us, Adam Carolla, of course, and then uh, one of uh, Mark's attorneys, Satara. She so rode in there with us too, and. She rode shotgun while the four of us took the back, brought some beers, and enjoyed the nice flight. August brought some snacks, some, some keto snacks. August always brings a bag of peanuts and jerky. And this time he changed it up. He brought cheese and salami. Ooh. Yeah. As, well as, as well as the nuts yeah. and the jerky. In addition to, in addition to, to the foods. You so, do a whole on charcuterie up there, huh? That's what we were doing. Yeah. Now, I was a little nervous. Well, there, there are a few things. First off... One, for probably until just a days before the trip, Gary, we didn't know if Gary was coming or not. And Adam did some weird jujitsu move with Gary where he goes to Gary and he goes, so uh, do you want to go on this trip? And Gary, Gary doesn't want to seem to, I don't know, he didn't know if Adam was trying to trick him or not. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird thing. I had I'd already so, pretty much expressed interest in going and then he came and did a, so did you want to go? And- I didn't. I had already made that clear. It was. It was strange. Yeah. And then Gary's like, I. I don't know. I don't want. I don't want you to go. If you don't want to go, do you want to go? Well. Well, yeah. I, I guess. Okay. Because if you want to go, then you can go. But you. You want to go. You have. To, you have to want to go. <laughs> You're just doing that to Gary for like. It felt like ten minutes. I could. I could. I was in the other room. Just don't. Don't turn the corner, Chris. Just stay behind this wall until this conversation is over. And uh, and Gary went. So it was, it was a good time because usually it's just me. Uh, Adam, August, and August. For those who don't necessarily follow every show, we were doing a live Reasonable Doubt, the first time ever. That, and that's the reason that this conversation was happening. I produced Reasonable Doubt, and on Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock, first ever live Reasonable Doubt. So, yeah, of course I wanted to go and produce my show. That's- yeah. So we're taking this plane. It's very small. It's, it's, it's a very small plane, but still bougie, and, and uh, we're just in very close quarters. And we got a little bit of a conundrum Morning of our flight, and Matt is hip to this too. Mike August tells me that they have sold VIP tickets at this trip, and we need to bring books along with us. And I said, sure, no problem. I always pack books in the merch bag. We usually bring like 50 books a trip. And he goes, we need 150 books, hardcover books. And this is 13 boxes of books. It's about 200-something pounds of books. Yeah, we weighed it out. It's 200 pounds. 200 pounds of books. In addition to our usual merch, this is just for people who already bought these particular tickets. So we have to bring all these extra books to this plane. So we are just trucking all these boxes of books into this private airport, and uh, and they're they're loading them onto the plane. It's super embarrassing because like, it, and it looked kind of shady because we're just putting all these boxes onto a private plane. And the pilot- one of you should have been wearing a Hawaiian shirt and aviator glasses, smoking a yeah. cigar, and just really play up like, "What's well, in these boxes? <laughs> You'll never know." Yeah, I should have looked a little more villainous. I yeah, did. exactly. Uh, so he's loading him up in the plane, and now he's kind of worried about fuel. There's a, there's a lot of like, oh, we didn't know there's going to be this much of luggage, but look, we had to bring the books, so that was annoying having to bring all these books. Fine, and now we're we're coming on. We're getting, we got the plane a little later than usual, so now I'm worried. Because we're landing a mere 70 minutes before showtime. If everything had gone perfectly according to schedule, we would have touched down with about <coughs> an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. But we were not close to on schedule. Right. So Gary and I go straight to the club, bring all the, stu- all the books and everything, get, get an Uber XL. And the only reason we had, we had to get the XL is for the trunk space because we had so much luggage. We get we get in the Uber, we get to the the show, set it all up, everything goes swimmingly, 
and and it was all fine. And actually, both shows went great. And then uh, we go back to the hotel for the first time because Gary and I didn't get to go to the hotel before the show. So it's midnight, maybe even later. Yeah. Get to the room. All right. See you in the morning. And then uh, go to sleep. Next morning, I get a text from Gary. Hey, going to get some coffee? Go to Starbucks? Want to go? And I say, sure. Go outside. Get on some scooters. And uh, go one block down to the uh, Starbucks. <laughs> now you, now you, you may what not know rise. this. You may not know this, but you weren't checking your phone fast enough. So I texted you and said I'm going to do this, and about 15 minutes went by. So I had been scootering around Salt Lake City oh. for about five minutes, and you were like, "I just saw this. Can I still come?" And I was like, "Oh, I'm downstairs. I'll wait for you." I was six blocks away. I just scooted oh, back. Oh, I didn't know that. No, it was fine. I was I was loving riding the scooter, man. Yeah. So we rode the scooters, got some coffees, and then uh, found, made our way over to like this plaza by the hotel. Just it was nice and open. Sat on a park bench and just uh, sipped on our coffee. The weather was impeccable. It's yeah. been hot as all hell in LA, and it was a crisp seventy-five during oh, the day. Amazing. It was lovely. Yeah, because usually during the days for these trips, it's just, it's kind of like free time unless Adam wants to go eat somewhere. And so I'm sitting on the bench with Gary, and Gary's having a tough time uh, focusing. Yeah, I think he has like a headache or something. I don't know what's going on, but something's wrong with him. And what 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 was it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It was like. We were, we were sitting on the park bench just sort of talking and, and just hanging out. But every time I'd look down at my phone, I, it was like a little blurry. And it was, it was like disconcerting. But then I'd look up at the people walking by, at the building, at you know, the sign in the distance for the, the you know, whatever. Everything looked fine. It was, it was just – it was vexing. I, like, I couldn't understand it. But every time I looked down at my phone, it was more and more blurry. Yeah, but then I'd look up and everything was fine. It was totally fine. And he looked like he was in pain, almost like the, just like with, with with looking at his phone or something. And then I'm like, "What'd you do? What'd you do?" He's like, "Oh, I just put on my eye drops because my eyes were hurting." And then I thought, "Oh, I think I know what's going on." I said, "Gary, take off your sunglasses." And he takes them off and he looks at me, and his pupils were the size of frisbees. Like these things were just wide open. And I go, "Are you rolling?" But no, no, but really, no, it's, it's, I go like, I, your eyes are dilated, dude. Like, I don't know what you put in your eyes, but your eyes are dilated. Like what, have you guys had that done to you before? Like rolling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Maybe. Yeah. So they put these, these eye drops in you. Like if you go to an eye doctor and they they have to look inside your eyes, Kalen, they put okay. eye drops in your eyes. So your pupils dilate, which means your pupils open up. I to you. let more light in and they could see. But you're very sensitive. So usually when you have this done, you have to have someone drive you home. You're, uh, you're blind. You're basically blind. All right. <laughs> and Gary put a shitload of these drops <laughs> in the, that morning, not realizing that these were dilating drops. So Whoa. Gary was blind for the whole day. Where did you get oh, dilating geez. drops? It only got worse. That so, fucking sucks. <laughs> dude, you have no idea, Doss. For, so for three years ago, I was having really bad eye problems. Like I, You may remember. I because, do remember. So I was having these problems where my eyes were just – I was in severe pain. I had to leave work multiple days. I was going to ophthalmologists trying to figure this out. As it turns out, I have like some sort of a blood disorder that was flaring up and, and manifesting itself in that way. But when that was going on, it was so bad that my doctor, in an attempt to alleviate the pain, gave me dilating drops by prescription so that I could dilate my own eyes. So when I got there, I wasn't sitting there in pain for unnecessary amounts of time. So you'd just be like, put these in 15 minutes before you get here. Your eyes will be dilated when, you, when I get to you, and then we'll be able to go through and do whatever we need to do because – Whatever he was doing, like shining light into it or whatever he was doing was exceptionally painful. So he wanted me there as little amount of time as possible. At the end of all this, once he figured out what was going on, he prescribed me these prescription medicated soothing eye drops, which I think you've all seen me put in. They're like white and milky color. And if I'm not paying attention, they look very funny when they're rolling down my face. But I found those in my toiletry kit and my eyes were a little red. It wasn't even a big deal, but I was like, oh, that'll feel really good. And I put big Big drops in both eyes and completely <laughs> blinded myself. Yeah. So Gary's vision is now just getting worse as the day goes. You just <laughs> packed the wrong ones? Is that what happened? Or you I, had both and you – No, I didn't have both. I I suppose 
I, I, this is the part that makes me the stupidest person in the world. I don't know why I would have taken the dilating ones and stuffed them in my travel kit, but they were in like a side pocket that I don't think I would normally open. But when my eyes were sort of hurting that morning, I decided to open that zipper and I was like, oh, look, drops. And I looked at them carefully and they say like for topical use on eyeballs. So I was like, well, these must be my medicated soothing drops, yeah. which I've had four different kinds of bottles of over the different times I've gotten refills. And so after Chris gives me this idea that I look like I'm on Molly, I go back to my room, take a picture of them, which I can't see, but I hold them steady, take a picture. I text it to my wife and the caller, and I'm like, I need you to look this up and tell me what the fuck I did to myself. And she's just on the other end, like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. How many, how many drops did you? I was like, I don't know, probably two big ones in each eye. And she was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What time's reasonable doubt? Four. It's like at this point, it's like eleven or twelve a.m. twelve p.m. And she's like, um, well, at least you don't have to drive anywhere. Uh, yeah. So yeah. I was completely blind. So, at so this, oh no. yeah. So Gary's. I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. There, there are other stories in between, but I just wanted to take you guys on the road of Gary's blindness right now. So we go eat. Gary can't read the menu. <laughs> <laughs> he has to wear sunglasses inside. Uh, inside the restaurant, he already. So I mean, look, we're we're, in, we're eating in a restaurant. Gary's has sunglasses on. Big shot, Gary. And then <coughs> and he, and he's have. I mean, he's just like Chris. This is so embarrassing. Um, will you read me the menu? Yeah. <laughs> and so I just go. Oh, they have enchiladas here. I'll take those. Like he just stops me because he just doesn't want me to continue. He's so bummed out right now. I was so embarrassed that Chris had to be my seeing eye dog that I didn't want to make him read anymore. <laughs> and by the way, we went to a we went to a delicious Mexican restaurant where the menu is about the size of a placemat and it's double sided. It was a I, red iguana that yeah, place? It was and it was delicious. Nice. But it there there had to have been thirty delicious things on that menu that I would have been down to try, but I was yeah. not gonna make Chris read anymore. Yeah, it was very very long menu. So and then Gary obviously can't read any emails. He's every time he gets a text or an email, he has to just show it to me. And he goes, okay, Chris, just tell me what this says. <laughs> like, he just flashed it, like, worried that it might be something embarrassing, too. So he's <laughs> yeah. just like, he's just taking the gamble. Like, just read this text and let me know. <laughs> and then I'd have to read him every text. Or if there's an email, I'd have to type it out for him. And then it's it's showtime. Reasonable Doubt is the first show of the day. And it's 4 o'clock. And Gary is running it. And so Gary sets up his laptop. He sits down. We we hook up to a projector in the back. And Gary, it, his he's so blind. He's like, just show me. Like, can you find the settings icon? It's the oh, one with the gears. No. And I'd have to like, like show, like point to him. It's right there. And we'd have to go. He's like, okay. And it just says like desktop or external screen. He's like, which one says desktop? And I have to like tell him he's oh. that blind. Like he can't see anything, and he just has to sit there running a show blind because I'm I'm getting prepped for for the ACS show, which is right after that. So Gary has to run. He does a great job, by the way. If you listen to the show, you can't even tell there was anything wrong. But Gary is just blind, and 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 this goes on throughout the entire rest of the night. Like the the second show, the show after that, like Gary is he's doing merch. He has to use the square reader. Oh, has, to anyone to say, I'm I sorry, knew to, you're doing merch. Yes, we'll embed a screenshot of the square uh, of the square screen. What it looks like, it is way bigger than the dialing of an iPhone. It is just these giant grids of squares. One, two, three, four. Every single person, and I'm sorry if you came out to the Saturday shows, every person who wanted to buy something over Square, I'd have to type in what I thought said $20, show it to them, and be like, does this say $20? And more than once, I would have charged someone either $2 or $200. Oh, no. I was that out of it. And every shirt I'd have to hand someone, I think this is an XL, but you're going to Oh, yeah, he couldn't read the sizes on the shirt. <laughs> I couldn't read anything. <laughs> Fucking That's nightmare. Poor mean. guy. Yeah, so get, uh, all day, just blind Gary. And we're all the kind of guys who in, who like to work, you know, like when when you get assigned a task, like you're in it until it's done. Mm -hmm. And to not be able to work properly is one of the worst fucking feelings. Yeah. So I can only especially, imagine. Especially when you've had this jujitsu back and forth with your boss who's like, you want to go, right? Do you not want to go? I don't know if you want to go. Then you've ultimately ended up having him bring you to Salt Lake City, pay for your hotel room, and then it's like, all right, well, here's your show, and you can't work. You can't yeah. pull it off properly. Ugh. To anyone who was in that room, I must have looked like an insane person because during the whole reasonable doubt, I had my sunglasses on, and I had my web browser open, blown up to 500% because that was the only way I was going to have any chance of seeing anything. So – after, at the end of the night, I apologized to Garrigus, and I was like, look, if I seemed a little off, I'm sorry. I blinded myself this morning. He's like, 
oh my god, I thought you were fucking hammered. It's like <laughs> no. sunglasses on. No, I wasn't. He's like, yeah, I kept looking at you on the side of the stage. You got the sunglasses on, the mask on. You're like squinting at your computer, even though your face is three inches away. I thought you were just fucking blitzed. No, no yeah. I wasn't. Which, by the way, I recommend listening to uh, his appearance on ACS because Garrigus got hammered. Yes, oh. <laughs> yes he did. But, Is it funny? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's great. Awesome. But, yeah, so Gary did a great job, all things considered. I mean, he, he even he woke up the next day, and he was at, what, 60%? 60%, 70%. I was able to, and again, to anyone who's a reasonable doubt listener, I'm sorry that the show didn't come out. I was physically incapable of posting, of editing and posting the show until the next morning. It was still super blurry, but when I woke up the next morning, I was able to edit the show and post it. But I didn't come back to full capacity until exactly 36 hours later. Yeah. That was when my Damn. eyes went back to what Jesus. I would call normal. So, and yeah. if you look up eye dilation, nightmare. the exact drug I used online, it says four to fourteen hours. So I clearly used a lot. Oh, yeah. So damn. So what Gary's trying to say is, we he wants to present to us. You know how we did the bird box challenge a few like last year. <laughs> that was a fun one. Let's up it, and let's all just <laughs> dilate the f out of our eyes, and uh, and do a podcast like that. There you go. Yeah. No. no. Okay. <laughs> Dawson's not down. Good call, Dawson. Oh, well, speaking of, sounds um, miserable. Again, there are other ways to get your eyes dilated, yeah. people. You know, uh, um, not, I, I do want to that dilated. I just do. I do want to tell one more story, and then um, well, it's a good thing you host a podcast. Yeah, and then we'll do, and then we'll go on our Patreon. Can is it okay if we do flicking in the Patreon? Yeah, no problem. Okay, so we'll do flicking in the Patreon because I, I just want to tell one more story because I, I was presented with an unfortunate situation as well. Not nearly as bad as Gary's Matt, but Matt is very privy to this because usually. When we go out for a weekend, Adam will want to go somewhere kind of local for lunch, taste of the city, or maybe he just wants some Hungarian food, whatever it is. It's at, it's really specific what he what he likes to eat, and he he actually looks forward to our lunches because this is just like our only chance to not be working but still just hang out. So Matt usually books us a really great restaurant for lunch, and this one well, there's a little bit of miscommunication. We all thought Garrigus was looking for a place for us to eat. Turns out he wasn't. And uh, and there was weird just, that he tweeted that he was. Yeah, weird that he tweeted that he was. <laughs> And uh, yeah, because we went off his tweet, he tagged us in it. So anyway, so now Adam is like, okay, well, let me get Matt on the blower and let's find a place to to uh, to eat. And I try, I always usually stop Adam for this because one, it's Saturday. Yes, yeah. like you don't need to call Matt to to for uh, to find us a place to eat. I can do it. Thank you. Chris. I'm here. Thank you. So Chris. typically, I will stop Adam and I will make the reservation and I will and I will do this because I. Yeah, there's no reason to call Matt Fondler back in California to find a place to eat. Now, this has burned me once. In San Antonio, we went to a Tex-Mex place where, famously, they served Adam enchiladas with American cheese. And my reputation with uh, picking lunch has been severely hindered based off of that selection. Adam still brings it up uh, that, that I took him to a place that served him American cheese enchiladas. So I look for a place, and the best place... In Salt Lake City, according to Yelp and all the places I look up. And actually, Gary told me about this on the way in because uh, he heard it from another podcast. Was this place called the Red Iguana, in the, which we actually drove by. And it's Mexican food. Now, you don't think, oh, Salt Lake City, bomb Mexican food. But I'll tell you this. They love their Mexican food out there. Mm-hmm. A lot of Mexican spots, very, very highly rated. And Chris went on the website and he saw a picture of Guy Fieri standing in front of it and he was like, "Well, there you go, Boom. done deal, sold, done deal." So I make reservations uh, to this place and and I call Adam. And go, I found a place, and he goes, "Really? What is it? Hungarian? No, Mexican. Dun, Mexican is and it's a renowned. It's the best. It's the best deal I'll ever get. I I really sold this place up because I knew it would be good based off of Gary already saying it was good. All the Yelp reviews." All the all the reviews on every other website, everybody. The red iguana is the shit. Okay, there's no way this could go bad. I even looked at the menu, made sure their enchiladas had uh, regular cheese in it, which Jack it did. cheese, Jack cheese. So, so Adam's like, okay, great. Be in the lobby at twelve forty. So we get we get. I order an Uber, and we all get we all pile into this this minivan. This lady's driving us, and uh, and we drive to the red iguana. There, are, Adam. Bye. Oh, sorry. And by the way, we get into this minivan and August is playing audio of a podcast, not like in his ears. He's playing it on a speakerphone. And it readily becomes apparent <laughs> that this Uber driver it thinks it's funny, thinks that our commentary on what we're listening to is funny. She's like, she's playing along. She's game. She's cool. Yeah. 
Very cool. They're getting along swimmingly because I will tell you this. If you get into an Uber with Adam Carolla and you order that Uber, you are rolling the dice, my friend, on that Uber rating because Adam – He's not going to stop talking about yeah. what he's talking about. That's very true. And 10 times out of 10, he interacts with that Uber driver. Yep. There is an interaction between Adam and the Uber driver. And whether it's uh, yeah, making them laugh, asking them about themselves, or telling them to run that red light. So it, you don't really know which, which Adam you're going to get, which Uber driver you're going to get. So you always want, you're always hoping for harmony. And so there's some harmony happening. She's she thinks Adam's funny. There's some good commentary. They 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 uh, they're both sharing their thoughts politically, and they're aligned. It's all going great. And then we pull up to the restaurant, and and I'm so excited. I'm like, okay, this is my redeeming call because Adam in the car also mentions Chris. It's your chance for redemption. Oh, I'd also like to point out that along the way, Adam points out. At least two, maybe three restaurants that he would have been perfectly fine eating. Yeah, P.F. Chang's. Hey, there's a P.F. Chang's right there, Chris. Why aren't we, we – P.F. Chang's, huh? This, this better be good. He's just – he's hammering it. This Side note, P.F. Chang's is not that good, man. It's it is downhill. not that good. Why are you so obsessed with P.F. Chang's? P.F. Chang's is fine. It's fine. That's it's exactly fine. right. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. It's not great. It's not good. I don't go out of my way to go to P.F. Chang's. Sorry, P.F. Chang's. No P.F. Ch- no comments for you guys. I don't care. Um, Listener Chang Mints. Oh, actually, that's yeah. That, that, all right. All right. <laughs> I don't think we can do that. I don't think we can. Anyway, Come on. We, so, yeah, we passed these restaurants. Adam's already putting the pressure on me. Look, this better be good. And then uh, we pull up. And as the door opens, Adam gets out of the car. He looks at the air drive. Is this place any good? Nah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> And oh, I'm just, I'm fuck. just like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? First off, in any situation, you just drop, you drove us all the way here and dropped us off, and you're gonna tell us the restaurant we're going to sucks. <laughs> what are you doing? Is it my uh, imagination? Or did she say not for me? Yeah, I, she did say that too. She's like, nah, not for me. Nah, I mean. And Chris and I just look at each other like, what? What in hell, woman? <laughs> How did this just happen? Who do you think you are? What, what kind of? A, what, oh. And Adam just walks out. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> just walks out. Oh no! One star. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I gave her. I didn't give her one star, but uh, man, it was just the worst setup for what could possibly happen. But like, how was the meal? So good. It was fucking delicious. And phenomenal. And here's what I there, here's now what I'm thinking and why I gave her five stars and a nice tip. She she lowered the bar yeah. just so we can exceed expectations. That's good. You thought. think you think that's what she did? I can see that. Now, you guys are Southern California experienced Mexican food eaters. Where? What are we talking about when you guys say it was great? Are we talking like is there a, a restaurant in California that you could compare it to in terms of its quality? Um, yeah, I'd eat there. I'd eat there over Paquito Moss ten times out of ten. <laughs> I'd eat there over salsa and beer ten times out of ten. It, it, it dose, would be one of the best dose. Mexican food restaurants I've ever been to. If dose it was burritos. if it was next door to Dose, I'd have to think about it. Okay. But that oh, okay, so that good though. Yeah, it was very, right. it was really good. Like if I next time I'm back in Salt Lake City, I am definitely going there again. Like cool. It's that good. Yeah. If it I was had mole, L- yeah, mole man. Adam loves the mole. He has talked about that before. Yeah, I didn't know that until after I ordered it. Did he get a mole thing himself? No, he ate mine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he was digging into mine a lot. Adam got a combination. He like basically invented his own combination. I think it could have been on the menu. I couldn't see it. Um, but he got like a taco and. In, an enchilada and something else, like a he chili this, relleno or something. He does this thing like he, he kind of makes fun of Mike August because August does do this a lot. Like he'll just sit down. You got Denver omelet, like that famous story. We sat down one time at a restaurant. It's like you got a Denver omelet and it was like a Italian restaurant. So it's just like Adam kind of does that too. He likes to custom order things. Like can I do this? And then could I just get one of these and then one of these on the side? Yeah. And like and they go, oh uh, yeah, we can do that. We can make that. Okay, great. I'll do that. And so that's kind of how Adam orders, anyway. So, thank goodness the food was great. I think I'm uh, I'm in the clear, and I can start picking more restaurants. I look forward to you planning the itineraries from here on out. Yeah, I'll, I'll start doing that as well. And then at the end of the meal, go August wrong? goes. Do you have dessert? Yeah. Oh, well, August loves his dessert. He's all at the clubs. He's always eating cake. He's and, he, and whenever we go to Mexican, he always orders flan. And so they bring out the flan. And it's just a it's a small piece of flan, which four spoons, perfect. And just it's a, a bite, cut a strawberry, it's a little nib, and then a and then a little thing of whipped cream with a cherry on top. So they set it on the table. And what does Mike do? He goes, mmm, cherry. Grabs the cherry, digs a bunch of the whipped cream, and eats the cherry straight yeah. away. 
before anybody's even touched her fork, it's like, yep, oh, Jerry! And just, like, <laughs> just, like, just takes it and just goes right in. It was, nice. He's so funny. And there, I mean, we'll, we'll get into some of it on Patreon, but I mean, Mike August stories that Adam tells are totally true and may even need, they need to a little bit more expansion because there are some really subtle things that Mike August does that are very funny. Um, but anyway, thanks for listening. And, and a lot of Bobo Boys in Salt Lake City, my friends. Yeah, seriously. Really? Cool. Take it over the people, world, man. A lot of people barking and more than a few DOT listeners, too, which I always, yeah. if you listen to that show and mention it, that always delights me. So why don't we why don't we get into that in the Patreon episode, which will come out later this week? Um, so we, we'll get, let's get our plugs in and GTFO. We'll start over uh, behind the glass, Mr. Kalen Bean. Oh, don't worry about me. Oh, really? But you say it with there's like the, like there's something you know that I don't. Hmm. That doesn't help. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Gary. Uh, watch The Mandalorian on Disney Plus and go listen to uh, Reasonable Doubt, the most recent episode, and see if you can figure out how blind I was. <laughs> uh, ver- yes, do that, please. Matt Fondelier, what's up with you? Well, if you're not already, subscribe to our Patreon feed. Please do so, so you can enjoy more content from uh, the five of us. And uh, I've mentioned it before, but I also work for a true crime show called Sword and Scale. It's Halloween time. Now is the time to listen to some scary podcasts. I highly suggest Sword and Scale. I'm not even going to plug my own episodes, just as a fan. You want to hear some crazy true crime stories that might keep you up at night? Again, maybe not all year long, but October. Come on, people. It's on iTunes. Sword and Scale. You want to be kept up at night? Is that a yeah, is that a thing you want? Yeah, why not? Okay. Let, let it open your mind. Think about things. All right. What will it do to me? I mean, you'll definitely <laughs> shit your pants. <laughs> no chicken necessary. Okay. Dawson, where can we go for you? Uh, yeah, follow me on Twitter at Matt Fondelier. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I do this, I got this side hustle, I write true crime Uh for this podcast Uh called The Sword and Scale. Yeah. The Sword and Scale. And, um. It's a different show. (laughs) Yeah. You should, you should check it out and it's Halloween time. So, you know, if you want to get spooky. Yeah. With it, check it out with true crime and, uh, call your mother. Call your mother. I can absolutely do that. I, I would like to plug my side hustle. I do birthday cocktail parties for fans. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, man. <laughs> no. um, for for my legit. plug, it, it look, just, <clears throat> just join in on the conversation. We got Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. There, there are places to reach to us, reach out to us, and just let us know what you like about the show. We're, we're also on Patreon at patreon.com slash watercooler, where we do an extra episode a week. So if you enjoyed this, find us there. We hear it's fun. Yep. I've got a scary story to tell in the next one. I had a close I would encounter. Love to. Oh, speaking of that, did you decorate? Did you start decorating for Halloween? Oh, we spent the whole weekend decorating. Oh, I love it. All right. Well, we'll see you at Patreon. Thanks again for listening. Thanks again to Salt Lake City. We love you. Goodbye. <laughs>